Have you ever tried to apologize for words that you said and realized when you went back to really assess the words that caused the pain or caused the argument or caused you to get fired or caused the friction, you realize I, I actually did say those words intentionally. Those, those are exactly the words that I meant to say. It's what I thought. It's what I felt. Those are the words I chose. And now there's this big giant problem and you have to apologize for those words that you chose and you said. Anybody? Does that ever happen to anybody? Or is it just me? I'm Jay Lauren Norris with Leading Leaders Podcast, and I'd, I'd venture to say that anybody who, unless they're an introvert who sits around talking to almost no one, and even introverts have this problem, often because they're not really adept at a whole lot of communication. They generally don't communicate unless they have to, and therefore the nuances of communication sometimes get lost. It's amazing, though, that we can say words that they went through our mouth, they, they sounded good in our head, they, they even felt right coming up from within us, and yet when that word landed, it didn't land like we expected it to land. Those, those sentences arranged the way that we intended them to come out. They landed like a ton of bricks instead of like a, a dozen roses. And part of the problem is... We have assigned meaning to words inside of ourselves based on our own perspectives in life, our own point of view in life, our own experiences in life. And the meanings that we've applied to those words, they, they mean something entirely different to someone else. I've talked before about a, a gentleman that I worked with several years ago. It's been, well, it's been over 15 years now, but he used to say when angry all the time, he would say, man, I was just living it. I was just living it. And I heard him say it several times, but we were peers, and, and he'd actually worked there longer than me, and I didn't feel like it was important enough to correct him, so I never did. I never said anything about it. Several months into working together, there was something that really angered me, um, off-duty, off-site. It didn't really matter at work, but when somebody asked me, how did you feel about that? I said, I was pretty livid. And they're like, livid? I said, yeah, I, I, I was quite livid. This guy overheard the conversation, he comes to me and he's like, so this livid, L-I-V-I-D word that you used. I said, yeah. He said, you know what it means? I said, yeah. He said, you know I've been using it wrong the entire time you've worked here. And I said, perhaps. He said, you've never heard me say living it? I said, yeah. He said, why didn't you correct me? And you knew I was using the word wrong. You knew what I meant by everything that I was saying and you didn't say anything about it. So I didn't feel like it was my place. But see, he was so ingrained in his own thoughts and conversation that it took actually hearing the proper word in the proper context from someone else to catch on to the fact that what he'd been saying this whole time was, it was made up words. It was like a, a can of snakelets. It, it had no meaning. But he was ascribing meaning to words that, that no one else had ever heard. And if you took those words out of context, you would have no idea what they meant. See, the challenge for many of us is we've heard phrases and ideas culturally within our family, within our circle of friends. And we've set up these expectations for what those words mean and, and how we feel about them emotionally and what other people should feel about them emotionally. And, and when they don't feel the same way that we expect them to feel about those words, sometimes we get upset and sometimes those words really influence other people. It's like that old phrase, you know, if you tell someone don't spill the milk, the chances are they're going to spill the milk because the brain doesn't hear the word don't. If you tell your child that they're a loser, even if you say it as a joke, loser becomes an identity in them. And, and you might be joking around going, you're such a loser because they missed the ball or they dropped whatever, that seems like a joke to you and you've always heard that and it, and it seemed harmless and now you've got a child with a self-esteem problem at 15 years old and they're suicidal because 
My dad has always only called me loser. See how subtle and deadly it can be? Don't take that chance as a leader. Whether you're talking about your family, you're talking about strangers on the street, you're talking about an audience, or you're talking about a group of people that you lead. When you have those patterns of words in your own mind, and they have their own meaning, and you've already emotionally addressed what they feel like to you, putting them out there in the world for others to hear should be really done carefully, choosing those words with great intent, not just for what they mean to you, harmless or otherwise, but what they mean to those who are going to hear them. Sometimes that's a cultural difference. Different parts of the world, different parts of town, different family upbringing. Sometimes those are truly misunderstood words or words like livid versus living it. Choose your words carefully, especially as a leader. You have no idea the depth of impact that they're going to carry. I'm Jay Lauren Norris with Leading Leaders Podcast for Tell Like It Is TV. Have a blessed day.